Well, some new information now on the threat of a massive earthquake on the west coast of our country. Even as Japan and the world remember twin, twin disasters four years ago today, that earthquake and tsunami that followed killed as many as 18,000 people. So what about the United States? A new forecast from the government says the risk is rising for a California quake as powerful as an 8.0. That's almost 90 times more energy than this quake that hit Northridge, California in 1994. We're joined now by Professor Richard Allen, Director of the Seismological <laughs> sorry, Richard Lab at the University of California, Berkeley. Easy enough for me to say earthquakes. That's what you'll take a look at. <laughs> Richard, so when we look at the, 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 the chance being greater, what experts are saying is that the risk used to be at 4.7%. It's now at 7%. That's the difference. W what significance is that? So it makes it, it does make a difference. It means that we know that there's a real risk of earthquakes, significant earthquakes like the Northridge earthquake. The big change here is that it's the really big events, the magnitude 8 events, that have increased in likelihood from about 4 to 7 percent, like you said. So it just, it's a reminder really for us that we have to be ready for these moderate earthquakes, Northridge like earthquakes, but we also have to be ready for these really big events. We know that they're coming, uh, we know that there's a good chance that one of these may happen over the course of the next few decades. Why the change in the estimate? Well, so as we, we update these estimates, of course, we incorporate our improved science and understanding of the earthquake process. And what's changed here, what's new, is that we have a better understanding of how faults can talk to one another right now. So California is riddled with faults. We always used to think of them as rupturing as individual segments. Now we understand that they can actually jump from one fault to another, and that can give us bigger earthquakes, and that's why the probabilities have gone up a little bit. And when we talk about big earthquakes, big events, what are we really talking about, Richard? Can you describe that? Sure. So a magnitude 8, um, as you said a moment ago, it releases about 90 times as much energy as the Northridge earthquake. Um, the Loma Prieta earthquake in the Bay Area, similar to the Northridge earthquake. So this is a lot more energy. It's going to do damage over a much larger region. And so, again, this points us to us all having to take responsibility for being ready for this big earthquake. We need to have a plan, we need to have a kit, and we need to think about the buildings that we're living in. And then the final piece, of course, is we need to be looking to new technologies. Um, in order to reduce the earthquake problem. And one of the things we're working on on the West Coast right now is an earthquake warning system. Which is something that we've talked a great, a great deal about. I'm looking at some of the video that we had uh, of the earthquake, Richard. One was in 1989 that you mentioned, the Loma Prieta. I lived in San Francisco at the time. That's where I grew up. I certainly remember that earthquake well. And uh, the power of it was extreme. Obviously, br breaking apart part of the Bay Bridge, one of the things that That's we're right. seeing on our, our screen right now. You know, but just the thing to, to remember is that that isn't the big earthquake like a magnitude 8. If one of those earthquakes occurs on the Hayward Fault or the San Andreas Fault through the Bay Area, it's going to be much bigger. I mean, that's really scary. I mean, just looking at the footage that, that we're seeing there. I just wanted to ask you a bit, because we've covered these other stories as well, these random swarms of earthquakes in areas like Texas and Oklahoma. Is that connected at all to what we're, we're predicting in California, or is that something different? Well, so the difference of these events in Oklahoma and Texas, for example, is that they are away from a tectonic plate boundary. So it's a different process. And the reality is that we don't understand that process, the, the source of the events in Oklahoma and Texas, as well as we do on the west coast of the U.S. So what we need to do is we really need to study them. We need to put out seismic networks so that we can capture even the smallest earthquakes in these regions. And that's going to start to give us the clues to understand the origins of the events. Yes, some, some are pointing to fracking. Others say that that's definitely not the case, and so there's a big disagreement about what the causes might be. Richard, we hope to have you back. We always like having you on the program. Thank you so much for the time today. Great to be with you. Well, the chance of a massive earthquake hitting California in the next 30 years has gone up significantly, according to a new study released by the U.S. Geological Survey. Scientists say they have found evidence that earthquakes can start on one fault line and actually jump to others, creating what they call a megaquake. I spoke earlier with RT's Lindsay France from Los Angeles, asked her how scientists reached the conclusion that these huge fault lines are, to a certain extent, interconnected. Well, what they did is they looked at a lot of imagery. 
To put uh, this into context, the reports used to be based on images of about 10,000 uh, fault line earthquakes. This report looked at 250,000, and what it found was where uh, earthquakes along fault lines were known to have jumped as much as three miles. Now, scientists found they were jumping as much as seven miles. Uh, they, they looked at uh, also an earthquake off the coast of Japan that was a 9.0 magnitude earthquake that happened in 2011. They used images from that also to study uh, to basically disprove the theory that er earthquakes were uh, isolated to just one fault line uh, when they happened. Uh, one of the, the authors of the study said it's become difficult actually to identify where some faults end and others begin, implying many more opportunities for multi-fault ruptures. They also found proof in this study that earthquakes can actually reverse directions sounds fun. Uh, never seen before, so we've got that to worry about. And uh, a lot of these fault lines run into massively populated areas like Los, Los Angeles and even further inland. Okay, I, I've got a second question for you, but how do you, how do you know an a, a re, uh, earthquake can reverse direction if it's never happened before? Well, you know, don't ask me, but according to the, uh, the, the scientists anyway, they were looking at these images and what, what, they, what they found was the direction that they thought these earthquakes had gone, the more images they looked at, which is that difference between 10,000 and 250,000, they found they were completely wrong and they found that a lot of earthquakes that had occurred were actually related because uh, according to tectonic science, one earthquake happens and it wrenches up the tension on a nearby fault line. And so what are the chances of these megaquakes hitting, really? Oh, I don't even want to know. Now, listen, <laughs> it's, not, it's not that bad, okay? One, according to the new information, one 8.0 magnitude earth, earthquake is, can happen about every 500 years. The old information said that one 8.0 magnitude earthquake could happen every 617 years. So at least we're looking at the hundreds of years, although that doesn't make people feel much better. I mean, in 19, I'm sorry, in 2010, there was a 7.2 magnitude earthquake on the border of California and Mexico. Scientists confirm that tightened the tension of tectonic plates all over Southern California. So we got that going for us, which is nice. It doesn't sound good when it sounds like it's all kind of gearing up. And, and of course, we don't know where we are on that 500, 600 year clock. RT correspondent Lindsay France from Los Angeles. Good luck out there.